Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. From a huge Fabrizio Here Romano exclusive revealing a massive contractor agreement. Ah, you're teasing me, naughty naughty. To Newcastle United's potential signing of two top class free agents. <laughs> To Newcastle being close to securing the services of an extraordinary manager who is excelling in the league and endorsed a player signing. What? Plus, what did Yankuba Minte recently say on his Newcastle United future? Your contract with Newcastle United? Yeah, Newcastle, yeah. I'm a... Join us as we break it all down. Let's go! Starting off, according to Fabrizio Romano, Newcastle United midfielder Jolinton is on the verge of signing a new contract at St. James's Park. The Brazilian international's current deal is set to expire next summer, making it crucial for Newcastle to secure his future and prevent him from leaving on a free transfer. Since Eddie Howe's arrival as manager, Joe Linton has become a key player for the team, transitioning from a forward to a midfielder. As his £85,000 per week contract runs until 2025, Newcastle might be forced to consider selling him if they fail to reach a new agreement. Jolinton joined the club from Hoffenheim in the Bundesliga for a fee of £40 million in 2019, so losing him without compensation would be highly undesirable. According to Fabrizio Romano, negotiations between Newcastle and Jolinton have progressed to the final stages. The Brazilian midfielder is reportedly willing to remain at the club and is expected to sign a new contract in the near future. The Telegraph further reports that Jolinton will become one of Newcastle's highest earners, joining compatriot Bruno Guimaraes. The new contract is expected to span four years. The talks have been primarily led by Chief Scout Steve Nixon, who played a significant role in Jolinton's initial signing from Hoffenheim. Newcastle has yet to appoint a new sporting director since the departure of Dan Ashworth in February, leading others within the club to take on unfamiliar roles. Steve Nixon's positive relationship with Joe Linton and his representatives has made him a key figure in negotiating the terms of the new contract, although Chief Executive Darren Eels and co-owner Amanda Stavely have also been heavily involved. The report also mentions that Joe Linton, who is recovering well from a groin injury and is expected to return to play in May, has expressed his desire to stay at Newcastle. However, the terms of the contract needed to be satisfactory. The progress made in the negotiations indicates that the new contract will likely be signed later this month, barring any unforeseen issues. Newcastle may need to offload some key players in the future to comply with the Premier League's profit and sustainability regulations. However, it seems that they are not willing to let Jolinton be one of those sacrificed, potentially indicating a desire to protect his value by extending his contract. Then moving on, according to reports, Newcastle United is in contention to acquire a 28-year-old Spanish international centre-back Mario Hermoso as they seek to strengthen their defensive line. With Sven Botman and Jamal Lascelles unlikely to feature for the club for the remainder of the year, manager Eddie Howe is in need of top-quality defenders at affordable prices. Given the requirement to bolster the squad with numerous players this summer, Newcastle is on the lookout for bargains wherever possible. HITC suggests that they may have found one in Mario Hermoso, who currently plays for Atletico Madrid. The Spanish international, who has been capped five times, is set to become a free agent, attracting interest from several Premier League clubs. Newcastle, along with Aston Villa and West Ham, is reportedly keen on securing the services of the 28-year-old centre-back. However, Hermoso has also drawn attention from three prominent Serie A clubs in Italy. According to HITC, the Premier League trio has made contact with Hermoso's representatives and is now aware of his contractual demands. This season, Hermoso has made 28 appearances for Atletico Madrid, featuring eight times in the Champions League. He has contributed two goals and an assist to the team's cause. As a free agent, Hermoso is likely to demand lucrative wages instead of a transfer fee, which could create an interesting situation as clubs compete for his signature. Newcastle's focus on the free agent market for backup players allows manager Eddie Howe to allocate more funds towards securing first-choice stars, particularly in positions that have been lacking quality this season, such as the striker position. While Alexander Isak has displayed world-class ability, the supporting cast around him has struggled, and injuries have plagued him since joining Newcastle. Additionally, Callum Wilson is expected to be sold in the summer, necessitating the acquisition of two strikers, which can be a costly endeavour. The defence, particularly the left-back position, has been a glaring issue throughout the season. Newcastle faces significant tasks in the upcoming transfer window, 
and being linked with free agents provides a positive outlook as they seek to address their squad deficiencies. In the ever-growing list of players linked to a potential summer move to Newcastle United, the latest name in the mix is Wilfred Ndidi from Leicester City, according to reports. JITC suggests that Newcastle is contemplating a move for the 27-year-old midfielder who is set to depart the King Power Stadium as a free agent. Ndidi's contract is expiring this summer, and the chances of him signing a new deal appear slim. Several clubs, including Newcastle, Aston Villa, Brighton, Tottenham Hotspur and Wolverhampton Wanderers, are said to be monitoring his situation. Despite Leicester City's relegation to the championship last summer, the Nigerian international chose to stay with the club. He has made 30 appearances for them this season, playing a significant role in their bid to return to the Premier League. Currently sitting at the top of the second tier, Leicester is considered the favourites for promotion with six games remaining. Then, Yankuba Minte, a 19-year-old player on loan at Feyenoord, has hinted at the possibility of a second loan spell with the club. After an impressive performance in a 6-0 victory over Ajax, Minte was interviewed by ESPN where he discussed his future in Rotterdam. Take a look. Yankuba. It was uh, a little bit uh, Yankuba day. Yeah, I would say, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, today is my day. I think uh, last game wasn't that good enough, but today, Alhamdulillah, uh, I played good, yeah. I'm so happy about it, yeah. You were eager, Feyenoord was eager. Um, where did the eagerness come from? Yeah, the eagerness, I would say, is that from the coach and then the players also has it in them. After Volendam? Yeah, after the Volendam game, uh, we know that uh, we play not a bad game, but we couldn't win. So we know that this is a big game and it means a lot for the fans also. Yeah, yeah. you said in, in, in a little sentence, we didn't play a bad game in Volendam? Yeah, we did. It, it was a bad game, yeah. Yeah, Cuba. Of course, I would, I would say, it's, <laughs> for me, I would say it's not a bad game. It's just like we didn't play the way we used to play. That's why the game was difficult for us, yeah. What did you enjoy most um, of your game today? Yeah, today I would say we play as a team and then uh, we fight for each other. When we lose the ball, we try to push each other to keep going. Yeah, that's what I enjoy the most. Yeah. And the 4-0? Yeah, the 4-0 also was so good <laughs> for me. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Tell us about the 4-0. Yeah, I would say uh, it's a great day for the, for, for the whole Rotterdam. It, because it means a lot to the fans also, it means a lot for the players also. I would say it's a great, great game. How did you? Yeah. Yeah, this has been my quality since I was young. So. This is your quality since you were young? Yeah, I would say, yeah. In Gambia, you did it every day at school? Yeah, not every day, but I score a lot of goals like this in Gambia, yeah. For you, it's a simple goal? Yeah, I would say, for me, uh, it's a simple goal, yeah. 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 Are you excited or are you very excited? Yeah, I'm really, really excited for the game and, and we try our best to make the fans happy, which goes well. Yeah, everybody is happy. I would say the whole Rotterdam is happy today. Yeah, whole Rotterdam is happy today. Um, um, your contract with Newcastle United is until 2028. No, I don't know anything about that. Uh, oh, you don't know how long your contract is? No, it's like my focus is here, Newcastle. Yeah, I'm a Newcastle player, but right now I'm in final. That's where my focus is. All right now, all my men is in final. You like you like to stay next year? Mm, I, I don't know. I cannot say that. But you don't know. It's a great club. Yeah. You don't know. No, if I have the chance, of course I will stay. But yeah, it depends on what Newcastle is going to decide, not me. Tell your manager not to send uh, the, the those goals from you and the assist to Newcastle. Oh, okay. I will. I will, I will tell you. Yeah. See you next season. Okay, thank you. Good luck. So Minte expressed openness to the idea of returning to Feyenoord for another loan spell. However, he also acknowledged that his future ultimately lies with Newcastle United, his parent club. Then, in some shocking developments, Newcastle came close to securing the services of an extraordinary manager who is currently excelling in his league, even going so far as to endorse a player signing. Before Eddie Howe's tenure, Newcastle underwent a challenging period under Bruce, exacerbated by a severe injury crisis. Yet the current campaign, 2023-24, has not been as demoralizing as the dark days under Steve Bruce during which it appeared as though winning games was not a priority. Fortunately, Amanda Staveley and Merdad Godusi, after taking over from Mike Ashley, recognized the need for change and ultimately appointed Eddie Howe. However, before Steve Bruce's arrival, Newcastle had nearly made a captivating choice. Newcastle was on the brink of hiring an unbelievable manager. It would have been quite a remarkable development. Prior to Bruce's contract offer in August 2019, 
Discussions had taken place regarding the potential appointment of Mikel Arteta as Rafa Benitez's successor, as reported by The Telegraph. The report suggests that Newcastle became heavily engaged in talks with Arteta, to the extent that they sought his opinion on the prospective signing of Joe Linton. Astonishingly, the 42-year-old coach actually gave his approval for the Brazilian's arrival at St. James Park. Although a £40 million deal was eventually sealed, it was Bruce who ended up working with Joe Linton after Arteta decided against taking the managerial reins. The Telegraph believes that the esteemed coach from San Sebastian, who has been described as unbelievable, didn't feel that Newcastle was the right fit for him. Ultimately, in December 2019, Arteta assumed the managerial role at Arsenal, succeeding Unai Emery. Mikel Arteta made a wise decision. Some Newcastle fans may feel a tinge of regret upon learning this, considering Arteta's current position atop the Premier League with Arsenal and his evident coaching prowess. However, it is important to remember Arteta's initial struggles at Emirates Stadium, where he received genuine support and patience from the club's board, despite Arsenal briefly finding themselves in the relegation zone. Additionally, Arteta had the advantage of working with top-tier talents such as Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, along with promising youngsters like Bukayo Saka and Gabriel Martinelli. On the other hand, Bruce had to make do with players of a different caliber at Newcastle, including Ryan Fraser, John Joe Shelby, Kieran Clark, Jeff Hendrick, Andy Carroll, and Dwight Gale, with all due respect. Considering these circumstances, it is uncertain whether Newcastle would have embarked on the same successful journey that Arsenal has enjoyed under Arteta had the Spaniard chosen the Magpies over Bruce. Then if you want to know the scary truth about Joe Linton nobody is noticing, click the video link on screen.